So. Magic man, how's it feel? Feels good. Feels good. You know, I think you each the ultimate high winning the Olympics, you know, lifelong dream and the world championship being so close together. And it's a very difficult time and I'm a competitor, you know, I wanted to compete, but I just didn't want to train between the Olympics and World Championships, you know? So I think you, know, you get guys who are really hungry and lost and it's just like, it stings. You know, you reach your goal and you go there and World Silver Medal is great, but under my standard, you know, I'm not doing this for silver or bronze or participation trophies, you know, at this point in my career, I'm, I want to win. And still being that close, you know? And uh, so that eats at me. Being on a single leg up in the air and not finishing, that's, that's really frustrating. You know, I come back, take some time off, you know, and uh, really start to wonder like, hey, Honestly, truthfully, like, am I gonna be done, you know? But definitely don't wanna end on a loss. I love wrestling, I love the train. You know, it's uh, you know, it's pretty pretty amazing, like, just the, the gift that I've been given to obviously further my career, help my family, and make an impact on other people. Um, and then to be two years away from another opportunity to win another gold medal, you know, that's, that's what it's about. So, you know, getting into this, training was difficult again. And, uh, you know, because you're like, what's your why? You know, you've, you've done your whole life. It was like, when things are hard, I'm like, I want to be Olympic champion. I want to be Olympic champion. Uh, I'm going to get this extra rep. I want to be Olympic champion. And then you're done. You're like, oh, well, I won the Olympics. You know what? Well, well, you know, man, do I really want to do this extra rep? You know, and I think it was just really a conversation with my wife. And this was probably six, seven weeks ago. And she's just like, we had a pretty emotional conversation. And she's just like, I just want you to win. Quit focusing on doing this other crap. Just, just, I want you to win, you know? And I think hearing her say that just lit, lit upstairs. Like, all right. We're back. We're doing this together. It's a team effort, and uh, the last six weeks has been amazing, you know. And I feel like I, got, I really got that hunger back. And I think you see it out there. I think you know I haven't wrestled in a long time. That first match, not that Valencia really did much, you know. He scored a shot clock point and a questionable push out, you know. And um, you know that second period, I started getting back into the groove of things. And that second match, you know, that's that, that's me, you know. And I think that's the sound of the world that I'm back, and I'm hungry because I lost, and I want to freaking win again. So, you know, now we got three months to get ready to go, and there's no secret that's Yazdani. You know, so he keeps me hungry and I uh, definitely don't want to lose him again. He's a very tough competitor to the, you know, and we're going to battle again in three months, you know, looking forward to that in Serbia. Seems like you uh, had a little bit of frustration with the officiating in the first match, kind of made that match harder than what it should have been. Uh, you know, I think you, you go on the clock in the first period, not a lot of urgency. It's not really a huge deal, but, you know, given that step out, that's just probably poor uh, decision making on my end. You know, he did a good job, you know, kind of scooting around and trying to play the edge and, uh, <laughs> I just kind of got a little careless on the edge. However, I, he definitely went out of bounds and to not let us challenge that, I think is, is kind of crap. You know, I feel like I've definitely earned the right to get that challenge. The referee was standing behind me blowing the whistle. I didn't even know, really know what was going on, but that's, and that's, you expect that going to competition. And, uh, you know, as he heats, he's a great competitor. He's hungry, I'm gonna be, that's a guy I'm gonna battle in the next couple of years to achieve my goal. So, you know, he, I, I picked it up in the second period, you know, and sometimes you just gotta go get that takedown. And I knew in this period, go get in that early takedown, opened it up. and. And that's what I was able to do. And then your M2 training center, winning the charter bus to come up and support yeah. you, man. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I, I kind of had the choice between Stillwater and New York City. And, you know, obviously each one has pros and cons. But to be close to my friends and family and from my club, you know, just having amazing parents. You know, one of the kids, Dalton Perry, his dad, DJ, has helped me with a lot of things logistically in the club. And he's like, hey, can we get a charter? And it really is just DJ and Brad Tacky, one of our coaches. I'm like, oh, let's check it out. You know, and uh, he gave his charter, it was an amazing price. And we would come up here and spend the day, get a block of tickets. That's a very memorable experience, you know, but we, we had 55 seats and we sold all 55 to come up here and watch, you know, so that's pretty special. I think at the MP Training Center to have a coach, coaches that are involved at this high level, you know, Mark and Brad and myself, but the things that we talk about in practice, that's what I'm implementing it. That's what I'm doing out there. The situational wrestling, the choosing when to score, the wrestling, the head and hands defense, that's stuff I talk to them about. So it's, they're not just like, ah, I don't know, maybe this will work. Maybe they're seeing it work at the highest level. And, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's a really special thing of a thinner place in my heart for the club. And, you know, it's just, it's made a huge impact on me and equally as much I've made an impact on them. Implementing the things that you implement, you get the Yazdani guy so tired yeah. because you wrestle so hard and you wrestle in David's positions and not letting him club you, underhook you, push you to the edge, or he does that two or three times and he gets tuckered out. How do you get that guy so tired that you are able to get him in the Olympic finals with 15 seconds left and run him down with a double leg? You double leg nobody. Right. You ran the guy down with a double leg, right? I credit my technique. It's pretty solid. But I think, yeah, I'm, you know, just anyone that wrestles me, anyone, they have to be, they're on threat the entire time. 
you know, they're on threat the whole time. So that's just a challenge that I've had since a young age is how do you continue to open people up? And, uh, you know, guys, Donnie, he's made changes. You know, early on it was let's go wrestle me. In the Olympics, they had, you know, they had three years game plan for that match. And they had a good game plan. It lasted to the very end, and it was very difficult. Um, and then this last one, you know, I just I didn't have that pop and fire and excitement to go get that takedown I needed. And uh, he controlled me a lot, more than any other matches. So, you know, he's done a good job making adjustments. I mean, and now I have to make adjustments. You know, and that's just the beauty of a rivalry at that level of, you know, two of the best guys in the world, pound for pound. And it's just micro adjustments. It's not changing the world, but, but one thing... You know, I just want to make people wrestle in my positions, and that happens. Lots of points get scored, and that favors me. I mean, you missed a foot sweep when you had the leg up there. Yeah. I thought it was like like Andy and I were just talking about it. It was a fluky thing. Yeah. You, you alluded to it earlier. It was like yeah. that was the difference in the match. You you get that, it's over. Right. You win the world title. I, I thought you looked pretty good in the match. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I just think, you know, the, the difference in living that lifestyle you, that I live to be the best is uh, it's all in. And just, you know, just between the worlds, the Olympics and the worlds, it, it just, it wasn't there. That fire wasn't there, you know, and I'm in on that takedown and I was tired from the first whistle. And I just, you know, I pride myself on having good technique. And in that moment, I kind of had, didn't have good technique, you know, and I, it, it sucks losing a match like that. You know, and I had, I had chances to do it, um, you know, but now I have the opportunity to go fix that and uh, finish correctly and get to that leg. And um, it's going to be a battle. There's no taking anything for granted or lightly, uh, He's hungry, but now I'm really hungry, you know, so it's going to be a battle on the floor of that. That conversation with your wife, what did that open your eyes to? You know, I, I just, I think, you know, being you know, 31 years old and I've achieved everything I wanted to achieve in the sport of wrestling, I'll take that back. I, I wanted to win four national championships and I didn't do that, but I was pretty close. And, uh, you know, I think she just kind of sees that like, dude, this is a big burden on our family. Like when you're, when you're training and you're recovering and all the things that it takes to be successful at your level, at your age, you're taking away from time if you're not if you're not present with our family then uh, what are you doing this for you know and i just like yeah you're right you know it, it's not a one-man team it's a team of both of us and we got two young kids you know and i think ultimately just i, I want to continue to set myself up for my future you know when i am done wrestling and getting caught up in those opportunities as well so you know ultimately like winning is hard i have a small window of two more years three more years to get the most out of what, what i what i can do and uh the world you know everything can wait you know i've been very blessed to have a lot of great things set up in our lives so now you know i just think it was like one of those win rocky win moments i told her like babe we had a win rocky win moment and then she's like what, what are you talking about i'm like you know just you're just you're telling me to go do it and that that lit a little fire in my ass that i needed and then i had really productive training and uh so yeah i mean she's why i do what i do and why i can do what i do because she picks up all the slack and um you know really grateful for her now you talked a little bit about the uh step out, not step out, the officiating, but the rules themselves have changed in the course of your career. Does that have any effect on your thinking or? Well, I think, I remember the day that they changed from the two, you know, two out of three periods of the match. You know, I remember waking up that day with a handful of texts like, hey, how does it feel to wake up and now know that you can be the best in the world and the, and the, and the, the rules favor you, you know? And I remember those texts. And at the time I wasn't there, I wasn't the best in the world, but they gave me a little hope. That two out of three periods was just, it was leading me down a not productive path, you know, I was just trying to like find ways to win matches. And as we talked about, that's not what I do. Now in these rules, you're rewarded. You put the time and effort into scoring points, you go get get, up, you get off the mat. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think the rules have changed for the better. I feel like the best guy wins almost every time the matches are out there, you know? And I tell my kids all the time, like you can't rely on, you know, little things. You gotta go take control. But in that match, you know, things weren't really going probably the way I thought they would. And you just gotta get your hands locked and finish take down and then open it up, you know? and I, I've been gifted a lot of offensive opportunities, so I just got to make the most of those. Beat the Streets is a organization to develop youth in the city of New York. You came here before as an exhibition. You tear your ACL on the same stage. Right. Was that in your mind at all to come back here? I think early on in that first period, I just was like, "Hey, let's let's build up in this match." You know, like Zahid's a you know he's a, a flurry guy, and don't you get, that's what happened when I was with Drew Foster. I got caught up in an early flurry thing. I was on a cradle and pin him in front of everybody and go crazy and got in a scramble and I you know tore my knee and it's just a really tough learning experience. You know, so there it's a let's build as the match goes. It's really focused on control and I mean I, I really controlled every single situation of those matches. You know, so it's uh. I have the ability to score a lot of points, but I also have the ability to to not let guys score points. You know, I think that's something that you know has some evolution in my career as I've gone over.
Was that a necessary evolution for you to have that knee injury? I'm sure you were like, no, no I'd rather not have that, right? No, 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 no. No, I mean, I, I think, you know, that gunslinger mentality of like, you score 10, I'll score 12, which is a kind of what I built a lot of what I do on. I can always do that, but it's not necessary. You know, I can really shut guys down and not really give them an opportunity to score. And But that, you know, hurting myself, that was the first time I've ever been injured in my career and like that. And, you know, just, I don't put myself in the same situations I did. You know, I think sometimes you think about living the other day and, it's not about trying to win every position as much as my pride wants to, um, but you can you can save yourself by being a little smarter on the front end of those things. Experience group going over there, but now you're a veteran. And then you have a guy like Zilmer who just won. Did he really? Well, yeah. What would you tell him, like a new guy going over to the big stage? We have a we have a great team with a lot of, a lot of leaders and a lot of experience. You know, it's 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 pretty remarkable to see at every weight class. You know, we have some new guys. You know, some new, some fresh blood. You know, with, with Seth Gross and. Um, you know, Yanni's still really young. Um, Zane's had experience, but hasn't quite you know, been able to get, get through that. And I think he, we've really seen him change you know, for the better. His best out of three was pretty amazing. And, and now Hayden, but there's no secret. You know, it's not like, what do we got to do to medal? It's, this is what we can do. This is what we can focus on and control. And Coach Zadek does a great job uh, of getting us ready and prepared. And, you know, Serbia, this is, this, is, this is the new quad. This is when the new guys come up. And uh, then this is when the, you know, the, whatever you want to say the older guys you know they are seasoned you know and getting out there so you know we're, we're pretty blessed and it's just about going out and executing you know, our goal is win a team championship you know 10 medals team championship that's my goal for the team and let's let's go do that so a couple times you've mentioned them to the kids uh you're at the point where you're coaching kids that are on world teams yeah. how does uh seeing their experiences uh positively impact you as a competitor Ah oh, man, it's so awesome. You know, I, I, I had a conversation, you know, I have these conversations with, with these kids, you know, pretty, pretty high level, you know, I, I definitely hold them to an expectation of not, not, it's not about excellence. It's not about winning. It's about expectation of going out and doing your best, you know, and I, I try and lead by that example. You know, our coaches lead by that example. I um, mean, the kids are doing that, you know, it's so, it's a big deal for the club to have, you know, back-to-back -back world team members. You know, last year we had Grace Stem and Levi Haynes on the U17 team, and this year, uh, KSAC made the team, but we had lots of guys right in the mix, you know, and that just elevates, elevates the club and everyone around them. And uh, these, I mean, I tell them, like, the parents ask me, like, these are world team opportunities. Like, that's a big deal to go through that. I mean, having that adversity of having to wrestle a two out of three and back-to-back -back years, our guys lost and had to come back and win two, you know, and it's, uh, it's amazing, you know, but it's, it, they put the time in and they, they make the decisions to go out there and implement the strategies and um, go get it done, you know, so it's, it's on them just trying to help, help them in any way that I can. And they're all, and just to see them here, I mean, that's just, it's, 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 it, it, it truly is amazing. And uh, I, mean, I love those kids. So it's, it's pretty awesome. A lot's changed from college, but one thing remains, you're still running out to Taylor Gang by Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. Is that song still getting you pumped up? Yeah, it's hard. Every time I'm like, how oh, should I change it? I try and think about these different songs. I'm like, there's just nothing that gets you going like Taylor Gang, you know? It's fitting. I don't know if it'll be a song that will come out. I mean, I like, you know, there's some new songs that have come out that, that I like, but there's nothing resonates like that one, you know? It's, uh, it's pretty special. You hear that, that beat kick, and it's like, let's freaking go. Let's go rip some heads off and get it done. Make a world team, win a world championship, win a big gold medal, you know? That's what it's about. Um, could we ever see you come back to Ohio? Say Tom Ryan retires in the next five years, or they offer you two million dollars a year? Would you come back and be the head coach for Ohio State? I mean, the, the world is changing, but you know, I, I love Penn State, and I, I really love doing what I'm doing. I have a lot of flexibility to, you know, with these kids. And college coaching is it's a different beast. You know, um, I'm never going to say no to anything. But listen, if I'm going to coach somewhere, it's at Penn State. You know, that, that's where my heart bleeds, and uh, they've they've. They've provided so many opportunities as coaching staff. So, if that ever was 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 available someday down the road, when Kale's done winning thirty national championships, you know maybe uh, maybe that would be something that would be a pretty great opportunity. Congrats! Thank you. Congrats.